Let's go back to where we've got me and then view profile. So this is where we last left during the break. We were viewing your own profile. Uh, I've got mine filled in. You want to decide how much you want to fill in that is relevant to you for your business. But we've got um, a spot where you can choose your address. Now they changed this again recently and there was a little button right below our icon where you can choose your address and I don't see it there now so bear with me let me look at it for a moment if anyone finds it shout it out but we are looking for a button where it says add your address uh, personal and contact okay okay here it is on the right side so I'm on the me screen and then on the right side we've got contact and personal info so now they made it even more hidden if you look under contact and personal info there's a little edit pencil contact and personal info I'm gonna edit my contact and personal info click on that pencil you get all of this other information to fill in like your website and such and there should be a profile URL Question. Uh, I don't see it here. You said. Sorry, let me go back. Uh, Okay, yes. Okay, these are your direct connections. Um, a first connection is that I am directly connected with someone else on LinkedIn. A second or third and such connection is there is a friend of a friend. So I'm, for, I'm here, I'm connected directly with Barbara. It's a first connection. So a third connection means that some other person is connected to some person which is connected to Barbara. So it's third level connection, first level, second level. It's just friends of they friends. Have you, your profile. No. Um, no, it's uh, even though it's showing it to you under view, it's just telling you this person has a first direct connection with me. This person has a first direct connection. This is a friend of a friend of a friend. So it's not really related you here, but it's just saying that this person is not directly connected with you. They're connected with someone else, which is connected with someone else, which is connected with you. So what's the use of this? The use of it, again, is that LinkedIn is trying to show you all of the possibilities of who you could connect with that might be useful to you. So how do they choose it? By random? Because you have 99 connections. Well, that was uh, been asked a couple of times already. And... Uh, Again, how does it know? LinkedIn has various formulas that it applies, and based on what my job titles have been, what my education has been, it's trying to show you connections that may be valuable to you based on your education, based on your jobs, based on your usage of LinkedIn. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But it, they have some kind of formula that I don't know all the details of, but they have some formula that helps you with these connections. But you're already connected, is I think his point. No, the point is that what is the first and the second and the third? Yes, I am already connected with this one, but it's still, it, and this screen is just telling me, yeah, these people viewed me and they viewed other people. And I may be interested in connecting with Erin because she's also a techno technical person. But you are already connected, no? Not with Erin. Oh, it's a third, third level collection, connection. Yeah. Oh, it's only until it has a little icon that, it, that you're actually viewed with them? Some screens show that little link icon. This one doesn't. This one just, if you've got a first level connection, you are connected. But it doesn't show the icon of the link. Other screens show it. Again, it's not consistent, unfortunately, in some places. But a first level connection is I'm directly connected. And anything else besides that, I'm not connected, and yeah. it's different levels. Yes. And, and can't you use um, LinkedIn to show you how Burned Books Bomb is related to you in case you want to connect with me, you know that Barbara Chandler could introduce you if Barbara Chandler is the 
person that he knows to a friend. Right? Yes, because it, it knows enough that there is some connection between me and him. Yeah. I can see that by clicking on their profile, which then they will say, Victor Campos looked at your profile. Oh. So you could see that stuff. Isn't there somewhere where you can just see how you, who's in between you and... Brian I've Campos? seen that also, but they just change their interface so often. Oh. It's probably in here somewhere, and if we find oh. it, let's look at it, but... That used to come up pretty easily, but yeah, you're right, I don't see it in mine either today. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of these... A lot of these things, um, again, these articles from Social Media Examiner, yeah, this is a great article from two years ago, so it's not relevant anymore. So definitely I would recommend people look at that article in Social Media Examiner from January, which has what are the big changes that have been made recently. I myself also uh, need, to, need to brush up on it and keep up to date with everything, and I'm on all the networks and I try to keep up to date with everything. And you saw here that I forgot one thing, because it just changes so much. So when we were trying to add the address, yeah. contact and personal info, when you click on that pencil, uh, mine has that address. Do you guys see there a link to edit that? Um, yeah, it's in the arrow. Oh, without the arrow? Yeah. Okay. No, well, the, the arrow goes back to view. Yeah, you go back to the okay, and it is here. Yeah, they changed that so much. Okay, well, when you're looking at it here on the edit contact info, you probably have that weird address with a bunch of numbers. Yeah. If you then click that uh, arrow, that'll go over to another view of your profile, and then on the right side, edit your public profile URL. It's really buried in there. That's what you want to edit, where you can claim a nice short name. You can give you can leave the. Uh, I believe so, yeah, you can do Victor Dash Campos if the other name's taken. Your custom URL must contain 5 to 30 letters or numbers. Please do not use spaces, symbols, or special characters. So no exclamation points and question marks and happy face emoji and stuff like that. But I guess possibly the dashes are okay. From this screen, I also see right below it, customize your public profile. Select what shows via searches on Bing, Google, etc., as well as on public profile badges, permitted services like Outlook and such. On mine, I've got it set here, make my public profile visible to everyone. And it's pretty open, pretty much everything I'm showing to people, that's fine. Uh, my goal of LinkedIn is to connect with people that are relevant to my business. If I connect with, you know, programmers or IT people, that's what I'm looking for. People that are trying to connect with me and they're realtors or lawyers and such, I may not have too much of a value, I may not connect with them. But the opposite is I can turn that to uh, private and then no one really will see anything about my account. I can show or hide some aspects. Again, I have everything turned on basically. You have some ability here, make my profile visible to your connections, to your network, to LinkedIn only, or to public. That's just a picture. Um, hmm, yeah, so under picture, it's tabbed under picture, that's right. So these other ones don't have the further, um, uh, the, Options. the further option or the further specification, specificity. These ones will be public just about everyone, I guess. Yeah. But your picture can be can can be made private to various degrees. So I think uh, LinkedIn is somewhat of an all or nothing. You're either going to be pretty public or pretty private. What's the badge? We'll look at badges later, but badges are if you want to put like an icon of your LinkedIn profile on your website. It'll let you put a little badge on your website of your, of your profile. 
some screens when you simply click the button it will it will save it and some of them have a save button so if you make any changes and you see a save button make sure you click it and some options just automatically change as soon as you change the option so i'm noticing on um, the the um, Right here, it says company website. Can I change that to say me.com or whatever it is? Or so just to show everyone here, on the websites of a person, um, I notice I have here, these do say the name of the business, VMC Inc. and VI Financial. Yours seem to just say company website because perhaps they were not properly set up on LinkedIn somehow the name of the company isn't isn't set up the right way and it just simply says company link so uh, we would look during the break on your particular case but it should show the name of the company under websites and not generically company websites it could it be because her, her company doesn't have a LinkedIn profile it would assume that what this connection is, is a link that does exist also on LinkedIn. That might be something to, to look at in, in detail. All right, so I'm going to go back to the main LinkedIn screen. to the main LinkedIn screen, click on me, click on view profile. After you change your URL, eventually then it, it will give you a nice, simple address that you can use. Uh, you can share via email, you can put on business cards and all of that. And depending how you're going to use LinkedIn, this is basically a resume version 2.0. A classic resume has the fields of your education, your job experience, etc. References. LinkedIn is a resume, can be used like a resume. And this profile of yours is that resume. So you have all of these all of these fields of that experience, education featured skills. If you don't have some of these boxes to fill in, we can add it in a couple of ways. You may see little boxes to strengthen your profile where it says let's set up your education section next or do this, do that. So you may see a strengthen your profile which is giving you advice on what you should fill in. Or at the top right corner add new profile section. You should automatically see that blue profile section anywhere you scroll. It kind of gets pinned to the top there. This one is all it can really kind of do is show you this. I can't really tell you what to put into it because every person is going to be different and have different goals. But as an overview looking at it, we have Okay, add a section of work experience, so the various jobs you've had. And I would say like a real-world resume, definitely pad your resume, but don't lie on your resume. Definitely, you know, self-aggrandize, but don't lie. Don't make it up. Like if you made, if you, if you make, this happens all the time with students of my web design classes. Say, I don't have any experience. I don't have anything on my resume. And I say, have you ever made a website for anyone? So yeah, I made a website, uh, you know, for my club at school. Put it in your resume. I made a website for my uncle's business. It was just, you know, one quick page. Put it on your resume. All of that is experience. So any amount that even if you think, well, you didn't get paid for it or you did it for a cousin, that's all experience to put into the resume. So if you were at an educational institute for a short time, you can put that in there. 
It doesn't have to be a graduation or a degree that you got out of it. Any of this experience has value. Volunteer, skills, accomplishment, accomplishments. Here's the spot to put more about a list of courses. If you, you know, take our various courses here, we don't give you certificates or proof in most of our, most of our classes. Many of our classes are personal fulfillment, basically. You can, however, still list them here. I took a social media sequence three-part class, three months, right? If you took this class, you have some experience. You can put it in there. But anything that you put in here, you should be able to, to back it up. You know, when my students come over to Southwestern College and they take my various classes, I tell them right away, if you want an A in this class, ask me and you get an A on day one. But what's the purpose of that? You've got an A in your resume, but when you need to do, or an A in your transcript, but when you need to do this in the real world, you don't know what you're doing. You're not going to get hired. You say you have an A in my programming class, but when you have to do it in the real world, you can't do it. So what I'm saying here is, yeah, you can put a list of all the classes you've taken, but can you do what you need to do regarding that class? You know, you, you take my uh, blogging class here at this college, and you, and you came for all four days. But did you absorb it? Can you do it? Have you done it? Do you have something to show for it? It's interesting that when you click that one, it says the course name, and underneath it, there's a blank uh, that says number. It's like, well, what does, what's a number? Probably the number, like, uh, oftentimes, uh, the course name, HTML and CSS, is the name of the class, but the number is CIS152. So most likely... Oh, number class. Yeah. Oh, okay. Although, because anyone can type anything here, you could type your kitty cat. Yeah. Oh, her suggestion was how many hours you spent in a class, because some classes might be, like you said, a four... That's a good point. <laughs> That's a good point, and there's no there's no guide here. There's nothing to really guide you what to put. I right away thought that it was the number of the class, because I deal with education and every class has a number. But number of hours makes sense, although it probably doesn't mean that. You know, 82 hours. It's ambiguous. <laughs> it's very ambiguous. It doesn't matter what that course number is, but lawyer, unless... The reason it matters. Yeah. The reason it matters is again, uh, Facebook's algorithm is trying to make all these connections. Uh -huh. If it sees other people have also typed CS 152, uh -huh. it may say you may want to connect with this other person. Uh -huh. Associated with. Now you might not see anything under associated until you start to fill in your other profile. I filled in various jobs and schools that I've been at. So this class with the number of this class, I took it at Southwestern College. So that's kind of optional. Everything is kind of optional here except for the name of the course. But this to show more proof, because again, you put whatever you want, but did you really learn something? Can you really back it up if you need to? So the more proof you put here, I took this class at this place. That is much more real and provable if someone really wanted to prove it, then simply writing, yeah, I took, uh, you know, Business 101 at Harvard. Yeah, click Save. Share it or not. Uh, publicly, I guess this is set to no. Uh, oh, no, share profile changes. So this is like when you're on Facebook and the other networks, you like <coughs> something, Facebook will say, John liked this. Do you want it for LinkedIn to say, Victor recently added this to their LinkedIn? Yes or no? And the default is no, because if you're making a lot of changes, all of your connections will get a lot of updates that say, Victor changed this, Victor changed that, Victor added this and that. So you might not need that. And each one of these sections might have its own things to fill in. Patents. Does anyone own any patents in class? So patents, what's the patent title? Is it from the patent office or different countries? What's the application number? When was it issued? And all of that. Projects, this is very 
I like this one a lot, it's, it's, but it's very open-ended. Whatever you define as a project, uh, I put in here, you know, the various websites that I've worked with, uh, or the various companies I've made websites for. So the name of the project, how long it lasted, is it ongoing? Contributor is who else did I work with? So these are the connections, again, to, for legitimacy. Because I can write anything I want and make the most amazing resume oh. that, that'll make you know Bill Gates uh, jealous. But mm -hmm. uh, I want to prove it. I want to back it up with uh, contributors and dates connected with certain um, jobs that I've had. So right here, web designer with VMC Inc. I did this project. And even better, a link to the real project so that people can see it themselves. Description is the usual, what you would do in any resume. Um, resume action words. If you've never done this, I would go off and do a search resume action words. 185 powerful verbs that will make your resume awesome. So go off and find these various websites that will give you advice about uh, a term like analyzed relevant data is better than used Excel. So I would get it out of, for example, you know, a place like Michigan State University. LiveCareer.com is probably okay, but anyone can make that kind of website. But a college's website is in, it's in their best, best interest for their graduates to get jobs. So something like a university and their advice for resumes and such would be one of the ones you want to put the most value in. Action verbs from Harvard Law School. Looks like you can even go deeper. Action verbs for actors, for students. So at your own pace, at your own leisure, you're going to add a variety of sections, as many as you think is necessary or relevant. Conversely, the whole point of this network is to get connections. So if you don't want to use it, and you just want to use the business listing, which, we'll still, which we're still getting to in a moment. If you want to use the business listing, you don't even have to fill this out at all. You just have your name and that's it. You don't have to have any education or any job title or anything. But like Facebook, you need an account for you then to create business listings. LinkedIn, we need an account to create business listings. And like I'm showing here, these are these other business listings. We'll look at this soon. But I've chosen to put in information that is relevant to me to try to help me get connections and jobs. And um, we also then use the business one. Let's write some notes again over here. Use LinkedIn as a resume 2.0. Add as many fields. I would call them sections. Add as many sections as necessary to show off your skills to create connections, to get prospects, leads, etc. Or don't use the personal LinkedIn focus on business listing. So you can use as much or as little as you want uh, on LinkedIn for the value to you. Do you cover in-mail credits? 
no, um, that's something that I need to get more educated on myself also, so I don't have too much to say about it. Now, LinkedIn, um, the content that you can create here, the content of LinkedIn, what you actually share. Let's go back to home, because you can spend the time that you need to fill in your profiles and such. But using it, let's say my purpose of LinkedIn, I am a web designer. I'm starting off as a web designer. I want to get jobs making websites for people. So I, I would try to use all of the social networks we've covered so far. Here's how one of the ways we can use LinkedIn, similar to the other networks. Back on the home screen, I have a spot here. Share an article, photo, or update. So if you click in that box, you get a spot for you to write whatever you want, as much as you want. Here's you know, blogging, uh, writing content as much as you want. You're not limited to the 140 characters like LinkedIn, or like Twitter. And uh, you can attach images. I forget how many at a time, but at least one, maybe a few more. And so this is, again, content as usual that you can fill in to share. It said, share an article, photo, or update. It's not obvious because as soon as you start typing in there, if you see that that link went away, that button, now it just says image. Before I clicked on it, write an article. So this is slightly different. This is technically an update. When you type here, an update is just a quick update, a, a missive, a quick message. Uh, on a topic like, uh, today I uh, was hired to work, uh, whatever. So an update to your network of connections. Thinking in terms, like we've said before, well, always think in terms about posting stuff that is going to be, that is going to help you. The only thing that this is really going to get you is maybe a like or a thumbs up or whatever. I, I want more than that. So, like the other networks, I simply wouldn't post something as basic as, as this. I would want to post things like, today I was hired to work at whatever, uh, don't forget to subscribe to their newsletter. newsletter. And then a link to their site. So something besides navel-gazing, something where it's also a link somewhere. I just typed the link, it gave me a preview. I guess link.com does exist. I thought it was just a name I made up. But you can attach a link to your posts. You can type the link, let's say. Check out my site for good prices on web design. And type the address of the site. Depending on various factors, LinkedIn will scan that link and try to show some kind of preview, just like Facebook, uh, similar to Twitter. Will the people get that in their um, email inbox as well? Depending on their settings. The default is people will see it on their home screen, but depending on the person's settings, they may also get emails of everything that happens on LinkedIn. So I've added a link, it gives you a little preview, and then I can post it, and my connections at least would see it. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Joe, just typing in your uh, web address create a link so that if, if I saw that in my uh, LinkedIn and I clicked on the HTTP, that line, it would take me directly to your... Yes, it would make okay. that link an active link, but also that little preview graphic, that's also clickable. So you can click, I would be able to click either place and get taken to the web page. I believe so, yes. So um, because we see, we see it right here. 
they typed in an address, and that is blue, which mm -hmm. should be clickable. And then I also see the preview graphic that's clickable. So yeah, that should be clickable. So that was an update. I can add some text. <clears throat> I can attach an image. Looks like only one at a time. It's an image. What's very common to do is, let's say I've got a website, and I've got articles, how to record a podcast. I want to share this on LinkedIn, so I have to copy the link of the particular article in question from my website. If your website has a link to share to social media, you may see from your website, share to LinkedIn. This is something you often have to activate. So if you don't see it, you know, some button to share your your um, blog to LinkedIn, you can always do it also by copying the address of the particular page you're trying to share, and then on LinkedIn, pasting it. Copy and paste. It will then scan that link. And if it finds a graphic, for example, it'll take the graphic as a preview and show, show that. And I would still write a little something about it. Maybe that graphic and that preview there is enough to give, people's, to give people a sense of what, what, what they're about to click on. But it doesn't hurt to write a little bit here about what the link is and why it's valuable to people. So podcasting doesn't have to be hard. There's a little help. You can, you can uh, get started to win. So as we've talked about before, being uh, being in the mindset of marketing, of advertising. This is our this is advertising 2.0. I want people to visit my website to get to give me traffic. I want people to hire me. I want people to know about me. So I, I have that article. I have a link here. My 101 connections could see this. People that are searching LinkedIn, how to record a podcast. So if I have an article, if I have a link, if I have content on LinkedIn, how to record a podcast, and someone searches inside of LinkedIn, how to record a podcast, my link may show up. If more people search it, if more people click on it, that's how it gets to the point that it shows up for other people that don't even have a connection. This is how, you know, Shelley's article might have shown up for me because of what the content is. I have connections and content regarding education, so I see something about education. I see this from Hewlett Packard. This is technology. I have connections and content about technology. I'm about to write something about marketing and podcasting and such those that have content on their profile about marketing and such could see my article and those that are directly interested in search for how to record a podcast could find my article. This is a variation of things we've talked about for the last two months. Create content that people are searching for. How to XXX. Top five. Why, why, why? Um, what to do when? 
z z. So very, very simple ideas here that we've said in variations throughout the other classes. But it's all about the content. That plumber gets hired because someone needs a plumber. That lawyer gets hired because I don't know how to, you know, go to the courthouse and, and plead my case. Um, I'm creating content that explains something, gives answers. People are going to search for that. Hopefully they find me. Then it's still up to you, however, on this article here. You know, I have all, all of this free information in this article, but I've got these other links that point to other things, or I've got links to click here, or hire us, or check this out. And then I've got, in this particular case, also uh, ads. Not very obtrusive, but there's ads on uh, all right, there, there's ads on this site. If someone did need uh, this particular item, they can click on it, and we get revenue. Ads on websites are the purpose of generating revenue for the for the site. And obviously, we've seen so many sites with so many ads on the side, at the bottom, on top that it, now it's it's crazy and it's annoying. I'm at least here. I'm putting ads here, but I'm not putting them so obtrusively. They're down there. If you do see it, on this particular one, I will post it. It may not show up right away, but maybe throughout the day today, you might want to search in the LinkedIn how to record a podcast and see if this loads up. Again, maybe it won't show up right now, but as it propagates throughout the system, it might show up eventually. Uh, quick question. Um, one thing that really annoys me on LinkedIn is that I get notified for like the smallest things, like when someone posts a, you know, one of those Google blogs or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I, I really just want to be notified if I get messages. Um, is there a way to fix that? Yeah, most likely your settings under me, settings, somewhere here, communications, email frequency, it might be there. So under me, settings and privacy, communications. Okay, here it is. Um, email frequency here. Choose what types of emails you wish to receive from LinkedIn. It's right there. Email frequency. Communications, yes. So there, uh, these are the things you might want to turn on or off, and you can have some detail about if you look under detail even more. If you just don't want any emails anymore about any network updates, just turn it off. But if you go into details, you can get, for example, show me the weekly di digest, or only choose recommended from certain people. So I think for most of us, these are all turned on. That's why we get a lot of emails from LinkedIn. We have to go out of our way to go to these settings and change them. write this also in the notes. Recommendation. Change your communication settings right away. Or else you get a ton of emails all the time. Go to me, link at the top right. Okay, once again, you click on me, then you click on settings and privacy, and then you click on communications. Click on me, and then settings and communication, communication. how you want.
We'll look at one more thing, then we'll take one more break. If you go back to the home screen, now this was a good point earlier, it's a little hard to kind of notice where you're at sometimes. Uh, they don't have very good design here, I think. I'm on the home screen, and it might not be so obvious, but do you notice when you go to the different screens, the icon changes color? It's very subtle, but I'm on the job screen. You know, I don't really see that many other indications. I don't see a big message that says, you're on the job screen. You just see a little icon colored in, and eventually you get used to it. But when you're dealing with four networks, which Twitter looks one way and Facebook looks another way, it's hard. It's easy to lose track of them. But wherever you're at, you'll go back to the home screen. We'll take a quick look at write an article, which is a long form message, a long form post. This is just a quick update. Technically, you could write lots and lots of content here. You could write lots of content, and they, it will let you. So look at this, I have a lot to say. Oh, actually, there is a character limit of 1,333. So if you wanted to write a longer piece, let's look at write an article. This is going to be like a blog post. There is going to be a spot for you at the top to add a graphic. It will be a headline of your article, and then you're going to write your content in various paragraphs. Let's see. Is there a limit on this one? No, I wrote a lot of interesting stuff and it let me. What's useful about this also is that at the top you have various formatting tools. Um, so, some text. I can, I can set this to be headings, normal text, I can set it to bold, bullet points, quotation, I can add links, so I can make that text a link. Next to it I have an icon here to insert images, video slides, etc. Snippets of code. So, what's a snippet? It's it's uh, specifically if you ever need to write code on your site. Let's say I'm writing an article about programming, and I want to show the code. So you write your snippet of code here. So they can actually see it. They will see the code. It won't do anything, but they'll see it. They'll see it marked like this that it's code, and that's often better for them than to copy the code and paste it into their own app. So it's only for code? Basically, yes. Code snippet. I can attach a video, paste the link to here and press enter, so I can get a link from YouTube, Vine, Vimeo, and more. Slides, links, images, drop an image here or upload it. So this is a this is their their publication. This is their blog platform. Once this is published, this will have a unique address. Eventually, it'll have a unique address that you can use to share it on your email. You can you can get very meta. You can write this blog post in LinkedIn and then share it in Facebook you know, to get traffic back and forth that way. You can have a link from this. You can have a link from your website back to this post. You just get the link after you've published it. Does that help with SEO for doing backlinks? It does. These connections from one network to another, from one site back to your site, is useful. Is helpful for SEO. What else do we have here? Save it as a draft. Go to the help. Share the draft. You can sort of send this draft to other people, individuals, so that uh, they can proofread it and such, or give you advice before you publish it. So How there, is this different than the one that you showed us when you inserted the flower feature? Like about it's different in that 
you can write a lot more. The other one is limited to 1,300 characters, which includes spaces and such. You can, add, you can attach more than one picture. You can also add styling like bold and bullet points. The other one is very quick, quick text, maybe a picture. This one is a big article, just more detail. And then this top graphic that kind of previews what the article is about. When you do backlinks, is it more powerful to backlink with someone else, or is it just as powerful to do it with yourself? It's better to get backlinks from other people, because people can cheat by making 20 links from their own website back to their own website. So getting links from other websites back to your website are much more valuable than your own backlinks. So they, they can tell. Yeah. Yeah, the search engines can, can tell that, and uh, it's uh, it can be the mark of a spammer when you have a lot of links back to yourself because the spammers do that. They link themselves. So I'm not going to write anything here, but this is yet another thing to, to work with. What do I write? Again, I can't answer that. That depends on your business, your goals, etc. But I would look at Social Media Examiner to get more ideas on how to, how to use LinkedIn or what to write about. That I had here articles on how to do something top five best whatever top five top ten worse whatever what to do when you're ready to move to a new house you know, advice articles top ten articles tutorial articles Can um, you say it's better to um, put a link of the blog from your website on LinkedIn or to do the backlinks that you were talking about like with where you actually create the blog on LinkedIn um, which one do you think would be more powerful I think writing your your articles on your website is more powerful because that's where you have the most control when you're on LinkedIn and any of these other networks you have to abide by their rules overall so if you're writing about some sort of I don't know controversial topic or some offensive topic, I don't know, you have these community standards that you have to abide by on the network. On your own website you can do whatever you want. On your own website you can put in the, the, the ads and all of that to help you gain revenue. On LinkedIn you cannot do that. So there are limitations to what you can do. It's very simple and you can do it quickly, but you have the most control on your own website. And especially if you've got a website you know, that is full featured, that gives you more options, you can just do more. And I would copy the link from my website and paste it into LinkedIn here instead of writing one, although I do mix it up. Some, for some clients, we write some things on LinkedIn, but most of the time we're writing it on their website because we want to generate the traffic back there. That's where you'll have the buy now button. That's where you'll have the contact button. This is not a dead end, but this is kind of, you come here and unless you fully set up other things, what else is there to do? You just read the article. On the website, you read an article, you read another one, you click, you click, you know, subscribe, or you click buy now. So the backlinks aren't really that that powerful then. Um, yeah, going back to your own backlinks are not as powerful as links back from some other site. So that's why I would want other websites to link to my site instead of to my LinkedIn. I want another website to link back to my article on my website to get me traffic. So let's take one last break. Uh, when we come back, we'll look at the business listing, how to set that up. It's 1140. We'll be back at 1150.